What is up design family? Welcome to another episode of Fit Design TV. On today's episode, we'll be looking at my top recommendations for seam types to consider when designing your upcoming sportswear line. We won't be going through all seam types in existence, but we'll be going through my top picks for sports replicable seam types. I hope you guys are ready and are interested. This is going to be a quick and short video. Welcome to Fit Design TV. On this channel, we'll explore what it takes to make it as an activewear fashion brand, whilst providing tips, tricks, and actionable steps towards starting your own product line. Whether you're an entrepreneur looking to start your own brand or just someone interested in fitness fashion, there's something for you here. My top eight recommendations for seams are as follows. We have your plain seam, we have your lap seam, we have your flat lock seam, we have your bonded or heat sealed seam, we have a French seam, we have the bound seam, we have the flat felt seam, and we have your serge seam. I'll go through each of them one by one. Number one, we have your plain seam. This is the most common type of seam that you see on garments of all types. And the reason for that is it's a, single, it's a simple seam to sew. It's rigid, it's structural, and at the same time, it's not too conspicuous. It's very kind of hidden and stealthy. And it's quite pliable, so it's gonna give you the flexibility that you need. You join the right sides of the fabric out and then you reinforce it from the inside where it typically can't be seen. You can, easily, you can either do this using a single pick stitch on the inside, a double stitch on the inside, or a zigzag stitch for a bit more of a structural weld. The second type of seam to consider is the lap seam or the tucked seam. Typically this seam is used on outerwear garments with thicker fabrics to gather up the unfinished edges of the fabric and the way that it's constructed is you have the same piece of fabric that's folded onto one another and you have an edge stitch on the outer part of the seam in order to finish it and hold it down. Because of the nature of using this type of seam on thicker fabrics, you're going to see it on outerwear garments. It's a great and structural seam that can be used to really hold down and to kind of create a yoke or whatever it may be on your piece of outerwear and I highly recommend it for structural garments. The third and probably most famous type of seam that you see in sportswear is the flat lock or overlock stitch. The reason for that is, is it's a great seam that has a lot of structural rigidity that adds minimal bulk onto the garments and it's great when used with sheer fabrics. Because of the way the seam is situated, it distributes the load over both fabric panels quite evenly and you don't get any of that kind of like pinpoint micro tearing, micro tearing that you might see with sheer fabrics that are using a plain seam. So that's why it's highly used in active wear uh, on leggings, sports bras, or pretty much any other product that uses highly sheer fabrics. We highly recommend it. You guys should check it out. At the same time with flat lock seams, you have two kind of side finishes. On the inside, you have a ladder chain look. On the, on the outside, you have kind of like a woven uh, looped zigzag look. So you're going to get a very distinctive look, something that a lot of people incorporate into the design. And because of that, you're going to be able to create something that is more unique and even decorative with your uh, with your seams. What we do, especially when designing leggings, is we use the overlock stitch or the flat lock seam to contour the body and to highlight different areas and to kind of create a more appealing look overall to the product. And we are able to do that because of the very apparent look of flat lock seams. The fourth type of seam is my personal favorite type of seam. It's a bonded or a heat sealed no sew seam. The reason I love it so much is it works so well in sportswear. It has that super technical look. It's very minimalistic and it allows you to retain the elasticity of the seam even better than some traditional seam types. It has a bit of water resistance because of the kind of sealed nature of the seam. Essentially what you do is you take the raw edge and you seal that with heat adhesive tape that is either applied through lamination, a heat press, or even some more advanced techniques depending on the specific supply that you're working with. And it adds minimal bulk and it just has this very low profile, low profile look and it's kind of very lightweight as well. So it has a lot going for it. It creates a very technical look. I highly recommend it, especially if the type of garments that you're going for are more technical. It's great with woven fabrics and that's always something to consider. So check it out, 
hate sealed seams or bonded seams, highly recommend it. The fifth type of seam that we're gonna consider is the French seam, a very elegant and high-end seam type. It's usually used on lighter weight fabrics such as silk or sheer, and it adds minimal bulk onto the seam. It's usually used when you wanna maintain a minimalistic or kind of a low profile to your seam. And the way that it's situated is you put the wrong sides of the fabric, you flip them over, and any of the excess fabric is stitched down and the raw edge is just sheared off. Typically you see this type of finishing on straight edges, but if you clip the pattern nicely, it can be done on rounded seams. And you're always going to see this type of fabric or this type of seam used on lighter weight fabrics in terms of the applications. You might see it on evening wear, uh, delicate blouses, sleepwear. It's a very thin yet flattering and durable seam type and it's going to create a more luxurious finish to your garments. As such, it requires a bit more workmanship to be done correctly and it's a more expensive seam type. But if it's suitable for your specific application, we do highly recommend it. It does create a much more polished look to your garment. The sixth type of seam that we're gonna consider is the bias about seam. Like the French seam, it's a very elegant and luxurious way of finishing your garment, a very beautiful way of finishing your garment, but it does add a significant amount of kind of bulk to the seam just because of the way that it's composed. You have your fabrics, they're folded and they're secured on the inside using the bias tape and which is held into place using a couple rows of stitches and that's what adds the extra kind of bulk onto the fabric. It's what you see on the inside of necklines in terms of securing them and it's always used in areas where you're gonna want a little bit more structural rigidity to your garment. Uh, we definitely recommend it. It does create a very structured look but you would never be using it on lightweight fabrics such as silk or even sheer fabrics. You're going to be using it on medium to heavyweight garments and it's great at preventing the edges of the fabrics from fraying just because of the way that it secures everything down and it prevents those edges from ever coming into contact with anything or ever being able to be exposed at any point. The seventh type of seam is a tank of a seam. It's the flat felt seam. Typically, you're gonna use this seam to secure the raw edges of fabrics, and because of the way that it's finished, you're going to have a clean finish, both on the inside and the outside of the garment or the fabric pieces. You're usually gonna see this type of seam used in heavier seams or heavier weight fabrics, such as denim, and you can either secure it using a single needle stitch, a double needle stitch, depending on the aesthetic that you're going to be going for. The eighth and final type of seam that we're gonna consider is the serge seam, a very functional seam that is intended to close, trim, weld, and secure the raw edges of your fabrics. Typically, you'll use an overlock stitch to secure those raw edges, and that overlock stitch can either be used in a three, four, five, or six needle variety. The reason why you might wanna consider different needle types is if you want more stretch, you'd be using less threads in your stitch, which would be a three needle. And if you want much more security, you'd be using a six needle, which will create a much more rigid look to your garment. But overall, serge seam is great when used with woven fabrics or any other fabric that's going to have some type of stretch that will need to retain that stretch but at the same time, you will want to secure that raw edge to prevent it from fraying in the future. So that's pretty much it. Those are the eight types of seams that we would love you guys to consider when looking at your sportswear line. Each one of those seams has an application that is different than the other, so there's no right and wrong type of seam to use. Consider these as tools in your arsenal when developing your collection. And obviously there are many, many others. We couldn't go through all of them today, but I did want to pick my favorite eight seams that we see most often, that we also use most often in sportswear design. I hope you guys have learned a thing or two. If there are any seams that you've personally used or you've seen or you wanna know the names of, please do feel free to drop in the comments below. It's always good to engage and have that conversation going back and forth. Thank you so much. If you've lasted this long the video, we really appreciate you checking us out. Watch some of our other videos and stay tuned for future videos. Thank you so much and stay awesome.